Master is a um, Hello, welcome to Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram, and this is episode 225, recorded on September 11th, 2019. And uh, you can see all of my shows. You can see my website, go walkinthepark.tv. That's my website. You can see all the shows there online, and you can uh, uh, you know, search through them, see what you like. And this one will be up online soon. Of course, this being uh, September 11th, uh, we're commemorating the, that uh, terrible day 18 years ago. And uh, I made a video a few years ago about September 11th to um, acknowledge uh, the healing power of nature for people that uh, were particularly stressed by that. So I'm just going to play that video right now. Coming right up here. In the agonizing days and weeks that followed September 11, 2001, thousands of people showed up at parks in upstate New York, escaping the trauma of that horrible day, looking to soothe their souls in the arms of Mother Nature. Nature is a great uh, bomb, a great healer for all kinds of uh, stress and, and uh, distress. Um, we're going to take a look now at uh, a story about a man who uh, experienced both war and nature and uh, was very uh, uh, involved in both and uh, known for his involvement in both. And to do that, we're going to go over to Watkins Glen State Park. So here we are. In uh, Ithaca, over on the right, you can see the Watkins Glen State Park at the south end of Seneca Lake on the left. We'll zoom in a little bit there and look at a picture by my friend Bill Heck, one of his aerial photographs. That's the gorge of Watkins Glen. And now we're going to zoom down in this Google Earth picture, looking down straight down in the middle there, just, uh, just above middle. There is a bridge in the woods there over the gorge. And here is a um, 19th century um, imagination from the sky of course well maybe they used a balloon i don't know but showing where that bridge is and the gorge and there are some structures around there and this is a more modern picture looking up at that bridge it's called the suspension bridge originally called the iron bridge and here there it is and that bridge has been there for well you'll see it's been there it connects the the two rims of the gorge going over the gorge the Watkins Glen gorge well here it is back in the 1800s and it was actually built in 1872 and um, here's a uh, Courier Knives print showing the connection between the two rims of the gorge. And notice that there's a couple of structures there. On the right, upper right there, is a hotel, the Glen Mountain House, which burned down in the early 1900s. And on the left, uh, something called the Swiss Chalet, which was a kitchen and dining room for the Glen Mountain House, and uh, a souvenir shop, uh, which was taken down after the park was created in 1906. So. Uh, now we're going to go take a look 
at a view of that uh, Swiss chalet and the bridge back in 1873. And obviously winter, there's the, uh, the Swiss chalet. And if you look on the lot right, just lower right, you can see that iron bridge built, in eight, built only a year earlier. And uh, that, that year in 1872 is also the time when a man arrived. Now here's a picture, we'll get, we'll get to just who that was. Uh, but we'll get to a, look at this map here, this drawn back in those days. And it shows the uh, running through the middle is the, uh, is the creek, Glen Creek and the gorge. And then there is a, um, you can see the road goes across the bridge. The lower part, lower center is the hotel, Glen Mountain House. And above it is the Swiss Chalet or North Glen Mountain House. And just to the left, going off the map, it actually says Hope's Gallery. So let's look at Hope's Gallery. It's an art gallery. Looking back at that building, the Swiss Chalet, from which this painting was done. Okay, so we're looking back. Now we're turning around, we'll go back to where the bridge is and look back at the gallery. So on the north side of the rim, what's now called the North Rim Trail. And that's the art gallery, and there's a little gazebo there. And in that gallery, lived a family. Let's see, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, lived, lived a family, the family of this man, James Hope, or Captain James Hope, as he was known. And he moved there in 1872 from Vermont. He also worked in New York City. He was a portrait painter in New York City. That's kind of his bread and butter, but he really was a, a landscape painter. And there's a portrait he did of himself, uh, a landscape painter. And he was, uh, he came to Watkins Glen. Here's a painting he did of his gallery and gazebo. Um, he came to Watkins Glen and set up this gallery, and he um, uh, painted pictures of the gorge. And uh, in the, um, here's what it says here, the gallery contains many of Captain Hope's finest paintings of the wonderful scenery of Watkins Glen and its romantic surroundings. It is located but a few rods above the mountain house and will be a feature of special interest and attraction to visitors. No person should visit the Glen without seeing the splendid works of art em embraced in this collection, among which are Hope's celebrated paintings of Rainbow Falls. We'll look at that in a moment. And uh, his Army of the Potomac. So that's another, and more. He's listed others, Forest Glen, Glen of the Forest, Sylvan Dell, and so forth. So, so we're gonna take a look at some of his paintings and also look at his most famous paintings, which are not of Watkins Glen. But, uh, so here's a person painting in the gorge back in the 1800s. And that's, I don't think that's James Hope, but he might have looked like that. That could have been him, I don't think it was. But is it, here is one of his paintings. I think this one is probably the one hanging in the uh, um, Watkins Glen Library. They allowed me to take a picture of it. Uh, this is a small, probably more a small study painting because he made great mural sized paintings. Oh, this is of Rainbow Falls. And his first, uh, first, first, uh, painting he did at Rainbow Falls was commissioned for $10,000 in 1872. That was a lot of money. It's a lot of money now. It was a lot more money then. Here's another painting of, uh, this might be the one in Watkins, in the library, and this, this other one may be in the Schuyler County Historical Society Museum in Montour Falls. And uh, there's another one of Rainbow Falls, coming from some art collection. This is, uh, these are from art galleries now around the Northeast. And uh, there he has, I think this one might be in Boston. This is up the Frowning Cliff area. And, well, that's what this is, too. And this, this one might, I don't know, but this might be the one that's in the Arnott Museum in Elmira. And um, there's another one up in what's used to be called the um, Glen Facility, the gentle part of the, here's another one like that. So he did a lot of paintings. He did a lot of paintings of Watkins Glen. He did it from 1872 until uh, 1892 when he, when he died. And um, so let's look again at his, uh, this Hope's Art Gallery. This is, a, this is actually in the Scotter County Historical Museum, this poster, but it's one of the original ones. Now it says Rainbow Falls sold for $10,000 and his Army of the Potomac, a large and superb picture, and the only one representing the whole of the Grand Army encamped on the same field. So, hmm, so here's a picture that he did uh, during the Civil War of the Grand Army of the po Potomac. This is the Union Army assembled in a field. So James Hope 
was a captain in the Union Army. He w organized a regiment in Vermont, and he was uh, became a uh, captain, and he brought that regiment to uh, to the Union Army. But he had some health problems. I think he caught malaria. I don't know. The different things happened to him. But he wasn't able to. Uh, he was engage, engaged in a lot of combat, but um, eventually he couldn't fight anymore. And he, be, he, because of his art skills, he was a scout, possibly a map drawer, but also a painter, also a, uh, did, did sketches of uh, some of the battles. <coughs> Excuse me. So I was aware of this, and I uh, had heard of his paintings and seen some photographs of his paintings um, over the years, um, getting to know... James Hope. I've actually done two shows about him, episodes 130 and 131. You can look them up on my website. You can see what I, the stories I have to tell about James Hope. He was a lesser um, Hudson River School painter, a lesser known one, but uh, definitely of that style and influenced that way. Um, but uh, his, uh, his most famous paintings are actually the military ones. So Let's go take a look at what they say here. Captain James Hope, the well-known artist of Watkins Glen, he died early on Thursday morning of last week in the 74th year of his age. So that's 1892. His oil paintings representing scenes on the battlefield of Antietam have made him famous. The Battle of Antietam. <coughs> we'll get into that. His last illness was malarial fever resulting from exposure at the recent national encampment of the GAR at Washington, Grand Army of the Republic. He was a valiant soldier in the War of 1861-65, and while in his service, contracted diseases from which he never recovered. So that's uh, what took him out of the battle. He was an artist of rare genius, and his four great paintings alluded to above, actually I think there were five, were masterpieces of art and excited the admiration of critics of both continents. I guess that includes Europe. In July last, Captain Hope took three paintings to Chicago and made arrangements to exhibit them at the World's Fair next year. Dece deceased was born in Scotland, came to this country, was nine years of age, survived by his wife, two sons, and so forth. Um, okay, so, so let's go to Antietam. Antietam, what is Antietam? Well, this is the map obviously showing, in the middle of the map it says Antietam NB. It's above CNO Canal NHP, blah, blah, blah. On the lower right is the Chesapeake Bay. The bottom part of the map is Virginia. This is actually in Maryland we're talking about. And then above that is Pennsylvania. And you can see the uh, Gettysburg NMP. That means National Military Park. Antietam NB means National Battlefield. So this is all a, um, this is now a um, uh, part of the National Park Service, taken over the National Park Service. I guess it was under the, the War Department and then the National Park Service took over. So anyway, this is one of his paintings of the Battle of Antietam. Uh, obviously, a photograph of it. And uh, this is what I had seen taken off their website and such, which you can see, and I'll show you the front page of their website here eventually. But um, uh, when he came to Watkins Glen, he actually, I think, I'm not sure exactly when he completed these paintings, whether it was before he got to Watkins or while he was still at Watkins. He'd done the sketches and probably um, study paintings and so forth. Uh, but he, he uh, pictured the entire battle in his murals, which we will see soon. And uh, so it wasn't just one instant in time. It was the entire battle was depicted. So this was, uh, he had his art gallery up by the, um, um, by the hotel and by the bridge up there. But uh, after he passed away, there was a, a gallery, a, a, a gift shop down in the main entrance to the park. This was back before 1935, probably the 1920s. Beautiful stone entrance. 1935 is a terrible flood that ripped it out and did a lot of damage and damaged the, the gift shop and lots of damage in the, in the park and the gorge. And uh, it, damaged those, it damaged those paintings. Uh, and a lot of his paintings were lost. A lot of his paintings at Glen were lost. There's not that many left. So um, a gentleman whose name I, I have uh, lost track of, um, but is known, I was told his name and almost introduced him at the Schuyler County Historical Museum. I gave a talk on James Hope last October 2018, because uh, that was the 200th anniversary of his birth, I think. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, this gentleman took, bought the paintings and took them into the Western Finger Links, I think Italyville, something like that, and this old church he owned, and he put them up in the church, way up along the rafters, 
uh, I don't think it was an operating church, but it was, that's where he kept them. And then in 1979, the National Park Service hunted them down. They found these paintings. They knew about them, and they found these paintings because these were famous paintings. And they went and they purchased the paintings and they removed them. And they were all, they were in bad shape. There were birds' nests and rats and so forth had gotten to them, mice, whatever. And uh, they restored them and they took them down to the Antietam National Battlefield. And so I, for years, I have wanted to go to the the battlefield. I'd driven back and forth to Virginia many times to visit family, and I had wanted to. Uh, I saw the signs for Antietam. I said, "Gee, I want to go in there and see the paintings." And it was took them a, a long time, I guess, to get the paintings installed. And I wondered if they were. So, but anyway, this June I went down there, and I camped in a state park, and I took a day. And I went to Antietam National Battlefield, which, by the way, was the site of the bloodiest single day bloodiest single one-day battle in American history, maybe the bloodiest day in American history, uh, where 23,000 troops were either killed, wounded, or missing. And so it was a horrible battle. It was a stalemate. Uh, neither side really moved much. Um, and the, the whole battlefield, you can go around it and drive around it and uh, go to various sites and see, um, see uh, interpretive signs and in the visitor center, there's an excellent film, about a 25-minute film, which, which just tells you this this horrendous story of what happened. And so, here's some of the interpretive signs. Um, something called the, uh, yeah, Burnside's Bridge, which was a major thing in the battle, and part of one of the paintings that uh, that James Hope did is about the Burnside Bridge because it was a crucial bottleneck in the battle. Which, anyway, so here's the here's the visitor center. And uh, I went and asked about whether those paintings were on display and viewable. And they said, oh, yeah, they're downstairs. Go take a look at them. And there was a whole exhibit room devoted to, to James Hope's paintings to tell the story of the battle using his paintings. So this was, this was pretty exciting to me. So um, let me see if I can. Uh, I have a video on that one, and I'm going to show you that. Come right up here. Just a, just a short video showing the showing you the exhibit room. So let me get that queued up here and running and in the exhibit room in James Hope's. Okay, so um, by the way, if you're just joining me, this is Walk in the Park on Public Access TV in Ithaca, New York. See all my shows, see my website at walkinthepark.tv, watch, uh, watch them online. So James Hope um, was a captain in the Union Army, and he did paintings of the Battle of Antietam, the bloodiest single day in the Civil War. And uh, that last, uh, or I had a... Um, painting there that I showed you this one. This was actually the photograph of a study painting, of, I guess, of it. But here's a caption that was underneath. And um, it said, this, let me see if I can find the rest of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's the, here's the painting that this is the caption for. And it's called Bloody Lane. And it is the most um, distressing picture that he painted. It's showing uh, hundreds of dead soldiers, mostly Confederates, in uh, a in a uh, farm lane that was 
recess into the ground. And um, so this does not glorify war at all. And the caption underneath says, Hope Restored. This remnant, which you see, which is on the bottom of this picture here, is all that could be preserved of James Hope's dramatic view of the aftermath at Bloody Lane. Hope was a professional artist who first rendered a series of portrait-sized paintings and then created these large panoramic works. The photograph surrounding the painting was taken from one of Hope's smaller versions of the same scene. The paintings were first exhibited in his gallery in Watkins Glen, New York. After Hope's death in 1892, the gallery was closed and fell into disrepair. So once again, this is the, um, I guess the picture, the smaller version, the earlier version of it that did survive, and then this is the restoration with a piece of the Bloody Lane uh, painting and uh, the rest of it extrapolated out. So um, let's look at the rest of it here in the, um, see if I can read this. No, nope, I have my own. Okay, a flood in the 1930s destroyed much of his work and severely damaged the battle panoramas. The Antietam scenes were purchased by an art collector and stored in a church, as I said before, for many years where the paintings were further damaged by birds and rodents. In 1979, the National Park Service purchased the paintings and began to rescue a rescue effort. Now painstakingly restored the four complete paintings, and this fragment provides us one veteran's vision of the Battle of Antietam. And on the right is a photograph that was taken, one of the early photographs from the Civil War, Alexander Gardner's photograph taken Two days after the battle depicts a scene dreadfully similar to Hope's painting in Bloody Lane. So, um, yeah, I actually went to Bloody Lane. And there's some interpretive signs about it. This is where all those bodies were. And there's, a, there's actually a monument to it farther down the way there. So, um, pretty awful scene. So, the Battle of Antietam. Uh, James Hope... Um, you know, he uh, memorialized or whatever he, he captured it in his paintings. And you can see those in uh, Antietam National Battlefield if you want. So, so what was this significant? Let me gotta get a split screen here. So here's a, just a little piece of that, uh, that existing remnant of the uh, Bloody Lane picture. And uh, I just want to speak a little bit about the, the significance of, actually I have a, the National Park Service puts out these wonderful brochures. I love their, their, their format. And they have all kinds of information about the um, about the park, whatever the park is. And let's see, there was a couple of things I just wanted to read off of here. Do, 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 if I can find it. A lot of details about the battle. I'm not one to really get all that interested in the troop movements and so forth, but at the significance of it here, I wanted to say. Okay, aftermath and significance. This was near the village of Sharpsburg. The battle and presence of thousands of soldiers caused sickness and death from disease and great property damage. Antietam made feasible the Emancipation Proclamation and reshaped the logistics of field medicine. It also influenced how, let's see if I can even read it, how the nation would memorialize battlefields in the future. Well, this invasion, this was the first invasion by the Confederate Army, by Lee's Army, into the north, you know, across into Maryland from Virginia. And he did it a couple more times. Um, and uh, he was going to go north into Pennsylvania, but then General George McClellan was sent with the Army of Potomac to, uh, to stop him. And he did. And uh, there's a story behind that you can read. You can go to their website and such. Here's their website, actually. You can read a lot about uh, the story there. But um, he did stop him. But it was, it was a stalemate. You know, 23,000 people were, were either killed or wounded or missing. And uh, so McClellan, though, told Lincoln that it was a victory. And Lincoln was, looking, Lincoln was looking for a victory because at that point it was not at all clear that the North was going to win the war at all. And Great Britain was about to enter the war on the side of the South. So um, this was a big deal. And bec but Lee, he, he withdrew, and then he went back across the Potomac into, into Virginia. So... McClellan went to Lincoln and said it was a great victory. Well, he repulsed Lee, but he didn't beat him. And um, so Lincoln 
then decided to go ahead with the Emancipation Proclamation, which declared all slaves in the rebelling states would be free from there on. And uh, so that's how that started. And this battle, maybe something good can come out of something so horrible. So that's one of the things. And also Great Britain decided not to enter the war. So uh, had, uh, had Lee won and moved on and maybe captured Washington or something like that, then then probably we would have Confederate States of America still, or maybe we would anyway then. So you can go to the website and learn a lot more about uh, Antietam if you want. And you can also go on the website and learn about uh, Hope's paintings. And there are details about the paintings and what each story they tell. So um, in Watkins Glen, just north of the park, is in the cemetery is James Hope's grave, and he was um, passed away on October 20th, 1892. By the way, this battle took place in September, September of um, uh, 1862, so um, this being September, it was this time of year. So James Hope's son, James Douglas Hope, uh, uh, stayed on after his father passed away, and he, he ran the Hope Souvenir Shop, and he was a, a really great photographer, and he sold lots of uh, photographs and publications based on those photographs. So uh, that's pretty much the story of James Hope. And um, well, I get back to my regular view here. So, so if you want to learn more about James Hope, like I said, you can go to my um, website at walkinthepark.tv and look up episodes 130 or 131, or just search for James Hope, and you will bring those up and see that. So. I want to thank you all for joining me here on Walk in the Park in a weekly public access show, Channel 13 in Ithaca, also shown on Channel 2 on, uh, in cable TV in Cortland, New York. So um, uh, thank you all for joining me, and I encourage you, the next opportunity you have, to turn off this screen or whatever screen you've got and go out for a walk in the park. So I'm going to have a closing picture here of James Hope and uh, just our, um, our credits... Uh, video coming right up. Um...